Hello, and welcome to City Year. My name is Kyle Mahoney. And I'm Joe Choinsky, and we're proud core members serving with City Year Chicago. Uh, tonight, you're watching a live interactive call and television, sh television show brought to you by CanTV21. Um, during the next 25 minutes, uh, we invite you to call in, um, ask us questions, ask questions of our guests, um, and that number at the bottom of your screen is 312-738-1060. City Year is a nonprofit organization that unites young people of all backgrounds for a full-time year of service and leadership development, giving them the skills and opportunities to change the world. City Year's vision is that one day the most commonly asked question of young people will be, where are you going to do your year of service? So here in Chicago, um, core members between the ages of 17 and 24, like myself and Joe, um, we serve as literacy tutors and mentors in the public school systems. Uh, we also engage uh, various communities throughout the city of Chicago in physical service projects that range um, from things like light construction, painting and landscaping, um, to you know some kind of a direct interaction like art therapy um, or providing you know more tutoring, which is kind of our staple here at City Year. Um, throughout the course of the ten months, each core member performs over seventeen hundred hours of service and is rewarded at the end of their year with a um, education award of nearly five thousand dollars. For more information about City Year, the service we provide Chicago and information on how to get involved, please visit us on the web at www.cityyear.org slash Chicago. There are a lot of different ways to get involved. Whether you're interested in serving with us for a day or joining the Corps for a whole year, all the information you need can be found at our website. Again, my name is Kyle Mahoney with City Year Chicago. Joe has moved over to our phone lines, so feel free to call in with any questions you might have. Um, but moving on to our first interview, tonight we are being joined by Michaela Moran, who is a fellow AmeriCorps volunteer um, and part of the National Service Movement. So, um, Michaela, thank you for taking the time to be here tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so, we always like to start out just by getting a little background info on our guests. So, tell us a little bit about, bit about who you are and where you're from. Okay, great. Um, I actually grew up in a suburb of Chicago, and um, I started, you know, um, I think my service experience started in high school um, doing tutoring and um, working with individuals with special needs and it's just continued on from there. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, so yeah, you talked a little bit about past service that you mm -hmm. did in high school. Was there more, did you do more in college or, or how did you get involved in the national service movement? Great question. Um, so yeah, I, um, at Boston College I really um, immersed myself in a lot of um, different service opportunities um, and I studied elementary education so um, you know kind of upon leaving school I really wanted to blend those passions for service and for education. So, awesome that's yeah. a great way to put what you studied you know into practical yeah. use. Um, so Michaela what AmeriCorps program are you currently a part of? So I am currently serving a second year with um, AmeriCorps Project YES, which stands for Youth Education and Service. Um, and Project YES is a program of the Northwestern Settlement, which is basically a multi-service agency um, in Westtown. They provide, well, they have over 70 programs and um, provide programs ranging from Head Start to after-school tutoring to emergency services um, and a variety of other services to um, serve the low-income neighbors in Westtown. So with the goal of kind of empowering those neighbors to um, become, you know, overcome the obstacles of poverty. Awesome. Wow. So it sounds like Project Yes covers a whole range of different services. Yeah. So well, within that, so that's... Um, Project Yes is within the Northwestern Settlement, and our focus is on um, working with youth um, in schools and in classroom programming and out of classroom programming, and then also um, promoting an ethic of service in the community by creating service projects. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, Michaela, um, what is your role um, in Project Yes? What do you do? That is a good question. So, I am. I served last year as a member, um, and I served in one of our. Um, partnering schools mm -hmm. um, and then this year I'm serving as the program leader so I'm more on the program staff side um, so I'm in the office with our program director and our program manager and my main focus is um, on our towards our goal of community strengthening so I facilitate service projects or the, the planning of service projects among our members um, at our six different schools so they plan roughly 36 programs or service projects during the year um, and then we also 
um, plan projects for national days of service, such as MLK Day and yeah, yeah. Global Youth Service Day. All those exciting ones. Yeah. So, oh, man. GISD yeah. coming up in April. It's it going to be big. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, everybody, just a reminder, our phone lines are open. If you have qu a question for Michaela about her AmeriCorps experience um, or a question for us at City Air, please give us a call at 312-738-1060. Um, so I'm going to switch gears on you a little bit um, and talk about this thing called Leader Corps, mm -hmm. um, which I understand to be a gathering of AmeriCorps members from around the state. But can you tell us a little bit more about what Leader Corps does? Definitely. Um, so Leader Corps is a group of over 30 AmeriCorps programs that um, one from um, each program or not most programs. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, not every program. Um, and we gather together twice a year for conferences and then are in communication throughout the year um, and we serve in a variety of different committees there's the national days of service committee the marketing and outreach committee and then the alumni committee so awesome mm -hmm. um how did you get involved with leader core so i got involved initially with leader core because as the um, program leader for project yes that's one of my um, roles so i was fortunate to just move right into it cool cool <laughs> um so you mentioned that Leader Corps is made up of representatives from programs all over the state of mm -hmm. Illinois. Um, how does it work, really, to, to get them all together? Do you, w what sort of processes do you do as far as communication goes? That's great. Um, so we, like I mentioned earlier, have two, there's only two times during the year that we're able to all be together um, for conferences and Serve Illinois um, helps to make that a possibility. And then we also organize monthly conference calls um, with each of the committees and then sure. um, the officers of Leader Corps, we have um, bi-monthly conference calls. Cool. Um, so Bi-weekly. <laughs> Bi-weekly. Um, gotcha. So okay so we meet twice we meet twice and we uh we have these conference calls mm -hmm. what what are we doing on these like what is the sort of the purpose of leader core yeah that's a great question so you know i think it, it varies for the different committees what their focus is but our focus um on the days of service committee is um, really to um, encourage and support programs as they plan days of service. So for example, for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we provided resources, Kyle provided some of the resources, um, to encourage reflection um, among volunteers at service projects. So by providing those resources to programs, we allow programs and encourage them to um, you know, include reflection. Um, so that's, that's one of our focuses. And also just spreading awareness um, about all of the amazing things that our miracle programs are doing. Um, we created a calendar of different uh, service events coming up. Um, and we're also working um, to create a new initiative for National AmeriCorps Week. So cool. really focusing on, and also, I'm sorry, one thing to add, um, sharing like best practices and resources for service project planning because programs, you know, range in sizes and for smaller programs to give them examples of, um, you know, service projects that have been effecti effective, excuse me, um, in other parts of Illinois. Awesome. Awesome. And promote collaboration. Sorry, I have a lot of things. To say. Yeah, no, I mean, it, uh, it sounds like, you know, Leader Corps does a whole lot. And I mean, because of the fact that there are so many programs um, throughout the state of Illinois, like City Year, for instance, is a member of AmeriCorps, and therefore we have a, a Leader Corps representative that we send. And so, um, you know, one of the reasons we really wanted Michaela to come on the show is to let all of you viewers know that while we do a lot of work in Chicago and we do focus on our own programming, City Year is also able to branch out um, and work with other programs throughout the state to benefit not just this city, but, you know, the whole state in, in a lot of ways. And so um, as a member of City Year, you would have that opportunity as well, um, you know, to benefit not only the city of Chicago, but maybe you grew up, you know, in a suburb or, or downstate somewhere, you would have the chance um, through opportunities like Leader Corps uh, to get involved in places other than just the city. Um, so, uh, a couple of kind of big picture questions. Mm -hmm. How do you see um, this type of collaboration being beneficial, um, I guess, first on the state level and then on the national level? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I think in terms of benefiting the state, I think collaboration of any kind, I mean, sharing resources and best practices improves all of our programs. So mm -hmm. I think that's huge. Communication, just knowing what is going on with other programs 
I think is incredibly invaluable. And then um, broadening that by, you know, collaborating and creating you know, even more meaningful projects, we're also engaging, hopefully, more volunteers um, and engaging them in really meaningful ways so that we can create, um, you know, really a greater ethic of service in Illinois. And also, um, through that, um, just help provide awareness about AmeriCorps um, and all of the fantastic programs in Illinois. Yeah. Cool. So, and then that I think leads into the national service movement again, just with that um, providing meaningful service opportunities and providing awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it, it kind of helps set up a model too. what we do in Definitely. Illinois for the rest of the country um, can kind of look on that and maybe model some similar programs as well. Okay. Um, so this, your experience with AmeriCorps, your experience uh, with Project Yes, um, it's undoubtedly been life changing. Mm -hmm. um, where do you plan to go next after your AmeriCorps service? Another good question. I <laughs> wish I had the answer for that. Um, I will finish my service in July, and I'm not sure exactly where I'm going. Um, I think I've been very fortunate to have spend the last two years um, with Project Yes and at the Northwestern Settlement, and I hope to see in Chicago and um, hopefully find a nonprofit organization with a mission that I feel passionate about and um, continue my involvement. Awesome. Um, so, we are running out of time for this segment, but um, as tradition would have it, we are going to have to give you the boot, right. um, one of our lovely Timberland boots that you would get if you were a core <laughs> member. Um, so, if you want to draw a question, and then I'll read it to you, and you can answer oh, it. Oh, you have to read it to me? Okay. I will. I Great. will read it to wow, you. Wow, this is really nice. So builds a little bit of suspense I like there. I have no idea what this question is going to be. All right. <laughs> um, so your boot question today is, what inspires you daily? Good question. Um, right now, I mean, I, this year I'm not in the school. I'm in our office. Um, and I think what inspires me daily is really our members and, you know, hearing about their experiences and the service that they're doing, as well as the staff, um, our program staff and the staff at the Northwestern Settlement, because... Um, there's so much passion and so much commitment. Um, my program director's been with our director for 11 years. Um, other members of the staff have been there for 10, 20, 30 years, uh -huh. and it's amazing. And the, um, the way that they really treat our neighbors, and that's what they call them, neighbors, not clients, it's neighbors. It's just beautiful, like those interactions. So I think just the people around me um, in the office are really inspiring. So. Awesome. It must, mm -hmm. it must be nice to go to somewhere like that every single day. It is. So um, I don't believe. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, again, thank you just very much for taking time. Um, I know that you're really busy, but it's great that you could be here and, and answer you. some of these questions for us. Um, oh, thank you for having so me. So, now, after a very short break, we will continue with City Year, Give a Year, Change the World. And change. People say that we have nothing in common. We don't look the same, talk the same. Or we'll come from the same place. But this, this isn't about who we are. It's about what we can do. Together. Because, because we, we are change. change. And together, we are unstoppable. Welcome back. I am Kyle Mahoney with City of Chicago, and the phone lines are open. That number again at the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. Please, please call us with your questions. We love to hear from you. Um, so joining us now is Eric Wong, who is a team leader for one of our after-school programs at the Sherman School of Excellence. Um, so Eric, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kyle. No problem. Um, so Eric... As, as always, we're going to start out with a little bit of your background. So tell us, you know, who you are, where you're from. Sure. Um, I'm 25 years old. I grew up in Arcadia, California. I went to school at Northwestern University where I gra uh, got a degree in biomedical engineering. Nice, nice. Um, so, you know, you mentioned you went to school. What were you doing before you came to City Year? You know, right out of school, I got a job with a large consulting firm, and I worked as a consulting analyst for almost two years, actually. Um, I was doing a lot of getting business requirements from clients and then translating those into different things that I would then test for, and uh, it was a lot of hard work. Awesome. Um, so, 
why did you decide to make the switch then from the private sector to, you know, doing some national service? Well, you know, as challenging as my work was um, at my last job, I didn't really feel like my work was helping anyone. I didn't feel like I was benefiting anyone. So when I left my job, um, that was something that I definitely focused on, you know, being able to make a difference in the life of someone else. And that naturally led me to service and volunteer work. Awesome. Um, so, as evidenced now by uh, Michaela and, and our talk about AmeriCorps throughout the state, um, we know that there are a lot of AmeriCorps programs and there are a lot of ways to give back to your community. So what made you choose City Year? Um, you know, actually a friend. Um, I had a friend who had previously served on City Year Chicago for two years. Mm. And um, I'd been looking at a lot of different AmeriCorps organizations at the time. But having that constant lifeline to kind of tap and to just ask, you know, how was your experience? You know, what were some of the challenges that you faced? By the end of the hours and hours of questioning, I really felt like I had a feel for what the City Year experience would be like. And I actually thought that I knew everything there was to know about City Year. I was, of course, wrong. But I mean, <laughs> The comfort level definitely helped in the application process. Awesome. Um, so what's the biggest difference then in your almost two years in the private sector mm -hmm. and then to now um, doing, you know, doing this kind of service? What's the biggest difference you've seen? If I could sum up um, the biggest difference that I've been able to, to, to glean from my experience in nonprofit, it's in one word, it would be flexibility. Um, you know, in my last job, we would have dates and deadlines that were set in stone, written into contracts, and they would never, ever change. And part of the beauty of working in a nonprofit, especially one that deals with schools, is that things are always changing. You know, your resources, your dates, your deadlines. It's like every other day I get a request that lands, you know, on my BlackBerry that lets me know that something is that is completely critical needs to happen by the end of the day and that's just something that you you learn to deal with and it, it's great for um, sharpening your time management skills and also just being on top of things yeah cool um so after these experiences um do you plan on staying in the nonprofit area in the future or do you think you're going to go back and work more in the private sector again you know i'm not really sure of where i'm going to go after this year but i do know that wherever it is it's somewhere where I'm going to be able to continue the kind of service work that I'm doing, um, really making a difference in the lives of others. Cool. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you are the after school program leader, um, which has got to be a lot of fun. But um, how are things going over at Sherman? You have any exciting days coming up in your in your after school or? Uh, yeah, actually, um, last week we were talking about conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot a bit a lot about um, you know how to deal with conflicts in a way such that both parties come out feeling like they're winning. We talk call that the the win-win scenario. Right. Um, we also talked a lot about eye messaging, um, how to express your feelings respectfully so that the feelings of other people aren't hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, this week we're making some stress balls as a way to <laughs> just, you know, get your frustration out in a healthy way that doesn't lead you to resort to having to take it out on somebody else. And uh, later on in the week, we're actually going to be making some peace globes out of paper mache as a way for the kids to help visualize what world peace looks like. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I Please, if I can put in a request to the kids of Sherman, make me a stress ball. <laughs> I need it. Um, so, um, everybody, please, again, remember, our phone lines are open. Um, we would love to hear from you if you have a question about what we're talking about or just about service in general, about city year. Um, Give us a call at 312-738-1060. Um, so, Eric, as you know, in City Year, we have something that we call a starfish story. Um, and a starfish story is, um, you know, a reiteration of a transformative change that you've seen um, in your year of service. And usually this has to do um, with, you know, the youth that we've served. So a difference that you have made um, in the life of a child. Um, do you have a starfish story that you would like to share with us? Um, I do, but I, I can't wholly take credit for it. This is something that, um, you know, me and my entire team um, has done. There is a awesome. one specific uh, kid, and I'm not going to use his real name, but just for the sake of conversation, we're going to call him Keith. Okay. Um, and from day one, you know, he was just a very emotional, very excitable kid. You know, the smallest thing would lead him into exploding and just yelling and... Um, 
we, we, you know, over the course of, of these past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. you know, after pulling him out of the classroom and having conversations about, you know, how to maturely and appropriately respond to, um, you know, someone else making fun of you. And um, after weeks and weeks of, you know, his team leader talking to him about, you know, ways to, to respond maturely again. Um, you know, the other day I saw him, actually somebody had called him a name and um, rather than explode like the usual way he, he usually would, mm -hmm. he actually turned to the kid and said, mind your own business, please. And um, that moment was, was amazing for me because it was somebody I was used to yelling and screaming and throwing tantrums, storming out of the room very, very calmly. You know, in that one instant, you could see how far he'd come along. Yeah. And he is still growing. And I can't wait to see what he's like at the end of the year because I'm, I'm just inspired by him every day. Wow. That's that's really cool and and good job Keith you keep that up. Um, so Eric, you you got into it a little bit I think with this starfish story but what do you think um, is the most tangible benefit that children receive from our after school programs? Um, that's a really good question. You know during our after school program we do do a lot of homework help but I feel that the 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 part of our after school program that kids can really take away um, from it is that the positive kind of social interaction that that they learn to, to have with others mm -hmm. um you know a lot of our our program is structured on leadership development and also learning about how to properly conduct oneself in a peaceful way without having to resort to violence or name calling just kind of healthy ways of communicating and expressing oneself and um that's i think the area where i've seen the most growth personally Awesome. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's incredibly important. I know that the Chicago public school system is, um, has just re done a new initiative about, you know, having peaceful schools and about learning to control, you know, issues or conflicts with, you know, nonviolent solutions. So um, that's awesome that you guys are able to do that in your starfish programs. Um, so, Eric, what would you say to somebody who is thinking about joining City Year? What would I say? Um, I would say that City Year is definitely one of the few places where you can go in for a year and really make a difference in someone else's life, really make an impact and make a change. And there's, I mean, there's not many other places where you can go and, and do that. And um, that has just been so powerful and inspiring for me this year. I'd recommend anyone to try it. Awesome. That's a, that's a great endorsement. Very good. Um, so, I mean, unfortunately, our time is, is getting pretty short here. Um, so, we are going to give you the boot, Eric, right. unfortunately. Um, again, Timberlands, you'll get it if you join City Year. <laughs> um, please. Right, so, I'm going to go ahead and grab the question and hand it over to you, right? Yes, sir. There All right. Go. Um, so, you are given just a small weekly stipend. What is your secret indulgent splurge? My secret indulgent splurge is um, my girlfriend. Um, I, I, I don't have very much money to work with. And so every little bit that I can save up, I try to take CC out uh, to a nice dinner every once in a while. That's, man, you're the man, Eric. That's all <laughs> I got to say. That's a great use of the little bit of extra money that we get um, in our stipend. Um, so... Eric, again, thank you very much for taking the time out and, and coming to share with us uh, your experiences in the city. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much, Kyle. Yep. Um, so before we leave you this evening, uh, we would like to go to what we call our service spotlight, um, which is where we highlight a different part of our service um, each week. We serve Chicago in a lot of different important ways, um, and so we like to highlight one on the show. Um, so today, let me get it ready for you for just a second. Today, our service spotlight is on the new City Year Chicago blog. Um, launched just recently, the blog is a great way to see some of the work that we do here at City Year. With videos and posts from the core, it will give you an, an inside perspective on what it is like to be on the forefront of national service right here in Chicago. There are new posts a few times per week, so make sure to check back regularly. Um, today's post happens to feature a starfish story like the one Eric just told um, by a core member named Tim Nystrand who serves at Howe Elementary School. Um, the address for this blog is cityyearchicago.wordpress.com. Please check it out and uh, leave us some comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, we are running out of time for this show. 
Thank you again for tuning in to City Year, Give a Year, Change the World, brought to you here on Can TV 21. Um, we will have another special guest and another senior core member here for you next week, so feel free to tune in again. Um, finally, if you are interested in learning more about how you can give a year and change the world with City Year Chicago, please visit our website at www.cityyear.org slash join us or call our recruitment manager at 312-423-7179.